What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Anonymous, the author, a.k.a. Anonymous Rap Guy, and I am back with another podcast episode. Man, I appreciate you guys for coming back today. Uh, we got dopeness uh, scheduled for the podcast, man. Uh, we got a quote from uh, the kid, Joe Rogan, uh, about uh, energy and momentum uh, some focus, something that I definitely agree with. And we just got some dopeness in store. I uh, got some, some talking points and some themes about uh, reclaiming your focus, about enhancing your discipline and really just being a dope individual, really trying to uh, pursue that self-help, that positive energy, those positive vibes that we've been putting out into the universe, man. Uh, yeah, I'm actually recording this on Thursday, so it's going to be coming out on the same day I'm recording, so it'll be some pretty up-to-date stuff that I touch on, but, uh, yeah, let's just jump right into it, get to this Joe Rogan quote, get to this dopeness, get to this podcast, and, uh, I hope y'all are having a good day. Lego. It's an issue of momentum. You're not used to doing it. You're not used to having it as a part of your life. It's not something you're accustomed to being. There have been many, 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 many days where I didn't want to work out, so I forced myself. I think there are a few people out there that are willing to force themselves. I mean, that's a learned skill, that kind of discipline and focus. You have to have real rigid requirements of yourself where you don't allow yourself to back out of things or allow yourself to slack off. You have to make it a daily principle of life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's just the energy that Joe Rogan came with in that quote, man, and I really like it. It's a quote from his podcast. Uh, they've really been doing a lot of stuff with uh, Joe Rogan's podcast since he did the whole Spotify deal. Um, you know, a lot of people, uh, some people aren't happy with it. They say they're, you know, stifling free speech, but I enjoy it, man. Um, $100 million for, for the deal. Uh, me being a podcaster myself, I'm like, hey, by all means, brother, <laughs> get your money. So, and so when I sit at the table, like I can say, hey, he made a hundred. I need to need that two or three for myself. You feel me? I don't need the whole pie. Let me just get a slice. But, uh, yeah, man, that's dope. Um, I've been a fan of Joe Rogan's podcast. Y'all know I'm a fan of conspiracy theories. The kookier, the crazier, the better, man. I not y'all know me. I'm not highly offended. And I'm always looking to uh, look into somebody else's point of view and see what they're talking about. And uh, that's why I love Joe Rogan stuff. I don't always agree with the guests um, that he has. I don't always agree with him being the host and uh, like some of his point of views. But it's definitely interesting to watch. It's definitely uh, some colorful characters. And you, like I say, you walk away learning a lot more. Um, you walk away learning a lot, and especially from opposite sides. Like, Alex Jones, to me, I don't know, <laughs> like, how much, um, like, his followers, I don't know if, like, because with any conspiracy theory, it's like, it's not just based around one person, it's the idea or concept. So I don't know how much conspiracy theory people, like, only go to Alex Jones and, like, he's the main one, or if... He's just a list in like, you know, the whole Rolodex of of people that uh, that they look towards. But I definitely like Alex Jones, man. Him and uh, Eddie Bravo, like some of their theories when they come on that show, it's like, oh, I never even thought about it like that. So uh, definitely interesting to hear them talk. And actually, I need to go up, the, uh, go up and actually watch. It looks like uh, Joe Rogan released one with Dave Chappelle and Donnell Rollins. I just hope Donnell didn't <laughs> dominate the interview like he tends to do, like he did, like he did with the RZA interview, like just completely talk, over talking and over sharing. Like, all right, bro, <laughs> we got you, we got you. You like to talk, you're a celebrity, we we, we get it. But uh, yeah, man, uh, back just back to the quote. I kind of got a tangent there about Joe Rogan. Uh, just just to get back to the uh, topic at hand, discipline and focus, uh, two core building blocks in just general success. Like it's. It's one of those things where you hear people talk about it, like, uh, you just, you just hear people talk about it. Like you hear the straw that broke the camel's back or, you know, you're trying to get water out of stone. It's like, man, you like the straw that broke the camel's back is just the, the essence of, it's just a lot going on. And then you put one more thing on and then it breaks it. But that also, it, it's a similar saying in that, uh, you know, as long as you keep, as long as you keep working towards it and as long as you keep putting that effort towards it, you know, sometimes that last little thing you do just sets it all off and everything starts coming together and everything starts uh, lining up in a place. And that's just the metaphor of the straw, you know, straw that brought the camels back just in a sense of like, um, you know, you just got to keep at it. You just got to keep doing it day in and day out. Uh, the, I've noticed that that's one of the hardest things about me is uh, I've always had a problem with uh, keeping deadlines. Like in my personal life when I was in school, uh, you know, college, it was just, uh, 
that's always been one of the hardest things for me. It's like, okay, this is due in a week. Okay, this is due at midnight on Sunday. It's like, I, I know these deadlines, but I've always had difficulty trying to meet them. I've always had the issue of like, you know, you write it in your planner or you put it in your phone. It's like, and just like clockwork, it always manages to break down. Doesn't matter what's going on. Doesn't matter what's happening. It just always finds a way to mess up. So uh, I'm just really trying to just, just really trying to stay on topic, really trying to stay on focus. That's really what's got me doing this podcast today is because I didn't want to wait until Friday to release it like I did last week. I want to keep to the constant releasing on Thursday so you guys can know when, you know, it's it's always best to have something that you can look forward to weekly. Like, it's always good to have that, oh man, it's Thursday. I know this, this is coming out. I got something to look forward to. I'm going to work. Like, when you have that day in, day out kind of hustle and struggle that we all go through, it's like every day it's the same old, same old, that you get used to originality. Uh, not even originality, but you get used to certain things being carved out and set. And when you have some a little reward, like some entertainment, like a podcast, I mean, you expect it to be on time. <laughs> you want it to be on the day that it's set to come. So um, I said all that just to say I'm I'm still a work in progress, guys. <laughs> I'm still doing my best to try to get the, the the content out there to try to get it in a timely manner to y'all. But I'm I'm uh I'm struggling, man. It's it's just it's just being a small label, so uh, doing everything that I possibly can to to make sure that y'all aren't waiting too long. But just just try to be patient with your boy. Um, so I, I really hope you guys are, are uh doing something similar. I hope you guys are also getting your discipline and focus um outside of of just your uh, nine to five. I hope you guys have discipline and focus in your extracurriculars. I hope you guys have something that you can look forward to outside of work that's uh, hopefully somewhat of a release uh, release valve for you. You know, you can you know, release the pressure, you can release the steam, you can release the built up days energy on whatever your extracurricular is, you know, whether it's working out, whether it's writing, whether it's um, you know, having friends and entertainment around you, whether it's watching movies, you know, just Make sure that you get a little bit of a, of a steam release so that you can, when you go back to your, your discipline or you go back to your job or you go back to uh, whatever it is that you do on a day in and day out to make ends meet, you can have that energy, that robust feeling to be like, all right, I can power through this. I know that I got some, you know, my reward, my extracurricular waiting for me you know, on the outside. So work hard, play hard. I'm going to just go in here, put my head down and just, and just get it through. So... I heard meditation helps a lot with that, with just being able to sit down and focus for long periods of time. I've been trying to meditate my daggone self, but it's just something about it, man. I just, I've always been like anything (laughs) that I have to do is just something I don't want to do. I've noticed that about myself is I'm completely um, fighting the, uh, just fighting the the, the flow. Like anything that I have to do, I'm just like, nope, don't want to do it. It's like you have to breathe. It's like, do I know? <laughs> do I really have to breathe? I think of a hobo breath <laughs> and pass out when you're breathing, when you pass out. Ah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm going to need the footage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, just just really trying to get to it. Just really trying to make sure you guys um, can grow to expect something more of me than just the, the, the crazy randomness. Because that works for... Um, you know, only so long. That stuff is only cute <laughs> with the podcast missing uh, for so long before uh, I know you guys start getting pissed. And I don't want to piss off y'all. y'all. Y'all are the reason why I'm still doing this. Y'all are the reason why I have half my sanity. So I appreciate everything y'all are doing out there for your boy. <laughs> but um, back, um, just to jump back on theme here. Um, yeah, it's 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 what the 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 discipline and focus that I'm talking about. And the rigid requirements that you need of yourself that Joe Rogan is talking about is just one of those things where it's not it's not something that can be taken lightly. It's it's really just like you have to do it every day. You have to do it day in and day out, regardless of how tedious it sounds. He said he had many, 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 many days where he didn't want to work out. And it's like that a lot of the time. You know, you go in with this idea and this concept of doing something, and then two or three months into it, you're like, gosh, it's been three months and no results. You know, whether it's working out, whether it's diet, whether whether it's, uh, you know, whatever it is with a life change. It's like after those first two, three months, you don't see the results. You're like, man... <laughs> Do I really need to keep doing this? Or, you know, you hit that wall, that proverbial wall that you hit, and it's just like, gosh, 
all of this is so draining. Like I got to get up again. I got to go there again. I have to do this thing again. And it's so easy to just be like, you know what? I'm going to take today off. I'm definitely going to take today off. It's, it's just like uh, if you guys are familiar with anime, One Punch Man. Uh, it's an anime that I'm a big fan of personally, Saitama. Uh, um, but anyway, the, the idea behind this, well, in the beginning, the idea behind the show is that uh, he says that he works out. And they say, you know, he's the strongest man, one punch and sending your body flying. And they're like, okay, well, how did you get so strong? And he basically says... I did uh, 100 jumper jacks, 100 sit-ups, 100 push-ups, ran five miles a day, and uh, 100 squats, and I got like this immaculate, super strong physique, and I can uh, do pretty much, you know, whatever I want physically. Now, obviously this anime is kind of jokey, obviously it's like a tongue-in-cheek kind of show, but um, it's really just that idea of going back and doing it day in and day out. It sounds simple, but I'm sure, you know, by, by month two or three, it's like 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, five miles a day, 100 squats. It's like, yo, I've been doing this for three months. I think I can take a day off. It's like, no, you can't. It's easy to take the day off. It's easy to say, I'm not going to do it today. It's easy to say, yo, I'm just going to skip this right here, but... If you want the long-term success, if you want the accolades that you're aiming and shooting for, it's like, yeah, you got to get in there, man. You got to get in that gym. You got to hit that practice shot again and again. You got to you gotta get the motion down over and over. You have to train your body so much and your mind so much that it's almost second nature. Like you go into work sometimes and you just, you're not even tuned in, but you go in and you, you, you knock the job out. You get it done and you just look up. Like, oh man, it's noon already. I didn't, I didn't knocked out three or four things. One damn near, damn near wasn't even paying attention, but we got it in and we got it finished. And now it's on to the next thing. That's what it's all about. It's just growth, individual success, not individual success, but individual focus. There's so much out there to get you distracted. There's so much entertainment. There's so much this. There's so much that. But at the end of the day, you got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm responsible for me. It's like, am I my brother's keeper? Yeah, you're your brother's keeper. But you also keep you also got to keep yourself, fam. Like you got to you got to have some level of upkeep of yourself and uh, some level of discipline and focus for yourself so that you can focus on other things out there so that you can expand um, your thinking and expand your view and explain your influence. Uh, you guys know, as I say, as I say all the time, I listen to a lot of, uh, a lot of different people that talk. I listen to a lot of, um, influences. I listen to a lot of speakers and, um, people who like to debate, you know, they call them modern day philosophers, but whatever you want to call them, you know, chit chatters, um, uh, <laughs> talk show hosts, you know, whatever you want to call them. Uh, uh, but I do I do listen to um, Jordan Peterson, and uh, he has this idea of cleaning your room um, before you go out into the world and, you know, try to tackle these other, uh, you know, uh, afflictions of the world, I guess would be the way to say it. It's just, say, it's just the idea of you have to make sure your own house is in order, that you can tend to the, the things that are immediately around you before you start dealing with uh, the rest of the world. Just because... Just just because if you have everything in order in your home, it's a lot easier to organize the outside world. Which is a good uh, idea in theory. Jordan Peterson is a very controversial figure, a Canadian dude, a um, little bit of a shocker there. Canadians are usually thought to be super peaceful, don't you know? Um, but I don't even know if that was Canadian. I think that was more Minnesota. Minnesota. But uh, yeah, I don't know why I felt like I sounded like Sarah Palin, even though she's from Alaska. I'm all over the place today. But, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just really that idea of, you know, this individual discipline and focus of what I'm saying is you really want to be able to hone in on your own life and be able to fine tune those things there so you can go out and um, be able to focus on things outside of your box. It's it's just easier when you have, you know, a reflection point. Okay, well, this is how I fix it in my life. Now I'm going here and see it in this life. Doesn't always translate well. Um, a lot of the things that we're seeing on a day-to-day -day is just because people uh, are so stuck in their bubble, so so stuck in their own personal little world that they don't actually expand out and uh, see other people's points of view. But I think that that's, that's really big is just getting your own stuff in order, get, it, get, get understanding how your personal world works before you try to figure out what's going on in the outside world because it's confusing enough out there with, uh, with everything that's going on, stuff that I still don't understand. Uh, 
levels of thinking that I just have not been privy or access to. Uh, third eye open, y'all know that, but it's just some stuff. I'm like, I don't even know what they're talking about right now. Um, now I'm not, like I say, never claimed to be the smartest, uh, never claimed to be the brightest bulb in, uh, you know. See, I can't even think of a good <laughs> analogy right there. So I don't claim to be the smartest bulb in the pocket. <laughs> That wasn't even a good analogy, but uh, yeah, don't, don't uh, I don't prepare to be, don't pretend to be the sharpest tool in the shed. You know that that's what I'll say. That's how I'll put that. But uh, definitely always into uh, seeing other people's points of view and just coming with my own uh, personal thoughts and energies. But uh, back to Jordan Peterson, uh, he had an idea, um, it, which I think does uh, help in this whole idea of momentum. This whole idea of uh, discipline and focus in improving your life is just that uh, Jordan Peterson was talking about Carl Jung. Uh, Carl Jung, I believe, is a famous uh, writer, slash philosopher, uh, person, a free thinker. We'll just say like that. I do like the name, the word uh, free thinker. Uh, but it's, it's the idea that you have to reclaim um, the, your, the childhood that you lost uh, through motivation and pushing yourself. You have to find the inner you in order to realize the 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 now you you have to know where you come from what your earliest um once needs and aspirations were to truly flush out who you are now which i think is really dope that's a really dope idea is to like to to really be who you are today you have to reclaim who you were in the past and i that's that's really what i'm going to challenge all you guys out there listening is like who were you when you were a little youngster who and I don't mean like obviously we all wanted the the biddies <laughs> we all wanted the milks uh but on a more grander scheme who were you back then when you were be when you had every need met and you only had your base wants and, and needs you didn't have to worry about bills you didn't have to worry about you know having food on the table it was just a simpler version of you didn't know about the, the the tragedies of the world. You didn't know you didn't have time to have your dreams broken just yet. You were still just a little baby. Uh, who were you back then? What what were your passions and wants? And you really need to have that conversation with yourself and figure out who you are, um, and who and what you want on the inside more than uh, more than anything else. I mean, you have to figure out like okay, when I was Coming up, I really wanted to be, you know, maybe you wanted to be that news broadcaster. Maybe you wanted to be a fireman. or Maybe you wanted to uh, be a cook. It's like, well, if you wanted to be that, it's not even about what you wanted to be. It's what was the driving initial feelings and wants that you had. If you wanted to be that cook, why did you want to be that cook? Was it because you just liked being around your mom? Was it because you liked just being in the kitchen with your dad? Was it family time that you spent with somebody? It's like, it's sometimes it's good to know the why, but sometimes it's good to know about the why. Sometimes it's good to know you got to dig deeper than just some of those basic instincts, some of those quick answers. It's like, yes or no, but yes or no, why? That's what you just got to dig into. Just dig deeper. They, they, uh, Dion Cole has this joke <laughs> about uh, digging deeper. Dig deeper, ladies. <laughs> you know, when you, he said when you go on a date with somebody, uh, I don't want to ruin the joke, but uh, just 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 dig deeper. That that's what the joke is. I don't want to coming from being a comedian myself. I don't want to uh, step on this joke, so just dig deeper, ladies. Just dig deeper, everybody. The joke is dig deeper, ladies, but everybody needs to dig a little deeper. Who who are you? What do you like to do? What what is the core energy that you drive off of? I'm an introvert. I like being alone most of the time, but being alone allows me to write things and to to really hone in on my own personal craft that I love to do. And I love to write because I love to express myself. I've always had this connection with with like poetry or music that you just hear it or you feel it in your spirit and you just can't sit still. It's just like you just you just want to grab your chest to hit you so hard and so deep. Um but yeah, that's it's just that for me, it's the evoking of emotion that I love. It's arranging your words and your thoughts and your ideas in certain ways that people feel in their core and in their spirit. And oh, I love that feeling. There's nothing better. It's just something so primitive in us. You know, when you, I don't know if you guys ever had that moment when you just hear a piece of music and something just, you can't explain it, but you just feel that. Oh, you know, yeah, <laughs> it, it, it hits you in the spirit where you just got to take that deep breath, whether it be pure beauty of the song or whether it be the way certain words were, were put together, it just hits you in a way where you're just like, oh, 
you just got to take a breath. It's like almost somebody hit you in the chest. <laughs> That's how impactful it is. But I, um, I, I definitely feel it. I, I definitely uh, agree with that statement. I, that's why I love listening to these people. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just fun. You know, that, I mean that I, I, I love to come back to this, especially on this podcast. But it's like that's the idea behind all of this. That's how the podcast started. It's just like I'm just trying to fulfill this crazy idea that I have stuck in my head of me just trying to entertain people, me just trying to evoke emotion, me trying to motivate, instill some kind of uh, self confidence or w- whatever you want to call it. I'm just trying to find every piece, portion, and morsel that I can to to help my fellow man out there. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's all, man. It's just I'm really just trying to help my fellow man out there. Uh, I'm not got. I'm not familiar. I'm not sure. This is might sound a little convoluted and crazy, but I'm gonna go down this out. Y'all know I'm crazy and kooky. Y'all been listening to me for this long, so y'all, y'all, y'all know y'all stuck with me. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't got no choice at this point. But uh, um, I'm not sure if you guys um, are familiar with like the idea of a singularity or a black hole. Um, I'm sure I'm going to completely murder this, but yeah, hey, come along for the ride with me. <laughs> I'll try to, I'll try to paint the the vision of what I'm thinking. But um, anyway, a black hole in a singularity, as you guys know, most of you would know, is just um, it's a collapsed star with a heavy gravitational pull that's centering around the middle of you know the middle of that the, the center of the black hole, which is sucking everything in. Black hole is so powerful, not even light it can escape. Uh, you know, it's. Every you know, even the center of the Milky Way galaxy is a black hole that everything will eventually be sucked into, but that's going to take millions of billions of years. And yeah, we, I mean, we won't. Mo- Anyone listening to this podcast right now won't be around by the time the Milky Way swallows up everything. Uh, so we won't have to worry. <laughs> it's not like it's going to be next week. Like man, listen, y'all, I'm telling you, you know, you might want to go ahead and get your Amazon orders in now because uh, once this black hole hit, I don't know how well. <laughs> You know, light might not escape, but Amazon drivers might be able to get out there and get to your house on time. Uh, But anyway, the idea of the singularity is that um, it's so powerful, not even light can escape. So if you were to happen to believe in two parallel universes, um, every universe would lead, if you were to fall into a black hole, every universe and timeline would lead to you falling into this black hole, however crazy or ridiculous that sounds. um, All futures would lead into that singular thing that's going to happen beyond that there would be no telling what's going to happen afterwards for the simple fact that no one knows what's you know goes into or what happens after you go into a black hole they don't know if you spit out a white hole they don't know if you're just condensed so far deep in into it you just go into what's known as the big crunch they don't know what happens they just know that once you go in there's nothing there's no telling what's going out and and that idea and that concept of a singularity i think applies to people and futures and to choices and to really unbridled and unrivaled happiness. Like, I think that we all go through our life on a day to day and there's no really, there's no real telling, you know, what tomorrow brings. But every day you're faced with a a choice or an opportunity That you might not even be aware that's out there for you. That, you know, whether that be Dave Chappelle getting on stage and doing comedy, whether that be 50 Cent picking up the microphone, whether that be, um, you know, Michael Jordan picking up a basketball, LeBron James picking up a basketball. It's just like at some point in your life, there comes this thing that you might not have even thought was a big, huge thing. But it's a certain point where it's like, okay, going down this path will change my life so drastically I can't even comprehend in a million years you know what it would lead to but it is an option and a choice for me that once I go down it my life will be forever changed in ways that I can never even begin to conceptualize or idealize and I think that that's really the motivation that you can have, the focus that you can have to keep pushing through is like, hey, if I stay down this path, if I keep pushing myself, if I keep improving, if I keep trying to be more, my life can be so drastically different than it is today. I might not be happy today, but I know if I, you know, if I clock in and do this nine to five and I save my funds up and I can invest in my own personal business or if I can save this money and start my own cooking culinary uh, classes or start my own uh, restaurant or deliver by night food store. It's like, yo, do that. 
Do that. Chase those dreams and ambitions. Chase those passions. Chase those energies that you have on the inside because this a lot of things aren't promised. And as long as you can get out there and flush out those passions and flush out those energies, you never know what it's going to lead to. You never know what the future uh, has down as long as you stick to it and you stick to your drive and you stick to your focus. Like you can't even... You can't even fathom what your life is going to be like in five years if you just stick to this one simple thing. But it's just day in and day out, every day, you know, 24-7, 365 of just you grinding and hustling and just chipping away at that Mount Rushmore. You know, water corrodes, but water doesn't corrode in a day. You know what I mean? Rome wasn't built in a day. It takes continual effort, continual passion. Sometimes these things just start rolling out the longer I do the podcast. Like I, I couldn't pull one of these out of my ass for a million dollars early on, but now the, the metaphors are just rolling. But Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, and you really just got to get up there. You've really just got to chip away at it. You really just got to put the passion and the effort into it. Because it's not going to be easy on, you know, month four, month five, day 60, day 70. It's like, oh, God, why am I still doing this? It's like you're doing this because you need it as much as they want it. You need it as much as they need it. Your skills in this world are needed. But if you don't flush them out, then how can you expect people to want your ability? If you've been doing the same thing for six or seven years and you feel like that you're not making any advancements, you're not making any forthcoming, you're not making any progress in it, then maybe you need to change your perspective. Maybe you need to realize what you aren't doing inside of, of, of the efforts that you're putting through. Maybe you're not doing the marketing. Maybe you're not. Maybe you don't believe in in paying for the advertising. Maybe you're not putting the effort out and contacting everybody you need to contact. I mean, getting the product there is just one step. Whether that be music, whether that be food, whether that be, um, you know, whether you work in uh, e-commerce, it's like having the product is only one thing. You still need to do the market. You still need to make sure people know about it. You still got to put the funds and effort out there to get the word out. And that's going to take some time. These brand names, Nike and, uh, and Adidas and Under Armour, these are household names, not just because they've got this million dollar corporations because they pay for the marketing they pay for making sure these athletes are wearing their shoes or making sure these athletes are wearing their wearables or whatever the the, the new it thing is it's like you've got to pay for that you can't just i used to hate musicians that used to put out music and be like man nobody likes my stuff it's like how much where's your what's your marketing budget how much did you spend for recording it versus how much are you paying to market it to people like, you can't just, I, I, I used to really hate, I still kind of dislike people who release music and they're like, yo, man, I'm the hottest thing out there. And they're like, oh, damn, that's dope. So uh, what are you doing? So people here, it's like, yeah, I'm just doing shows. It's like, okay, that's cool. What else are you doing? And they're like, man, I'm just scattered on social media. It's like, really? <laughs> that's, that's not enough. Do you know how many musicians there are? On a, on a one block in Cincinnati, you can pull out at least seven rappers. Like, seriously, like if you go block by block, you can get like at least seven rappers per block in Cincinnati, randomly. I don't know about y'all, but Cincinnati is made up of hundreds of thousands of blocks. So if there's thousands of rappers in Cincinnati and you think releasing your stuff on social media is going to be enough, it's not. And that goes with anything else in, the, in, in this entrepreneurship world. It's like, if you want to get your stuff popping, if you want to get your club name going, if you want to get your brand name going, you're going to have to pay these mar this marketing budget. You're going to have to get influencers. You're going to have to get your word out there other than just saying, yo, man, I vouch for myself. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. So just put that effort in out there. Just Y'all know I'm big on uh, taking the, the, the reins into your own hand, taking the world into your own hand. So... Whatever you do to make ends meet during the day, whatever those bills are, whatever those that um, nine to five hustle is, if you have a nine to five, if you've already uh, transitioned to entrepreneurship and you uh, making your own hours, shout out to you. But um, th just make sure that you're directing your energies and your best efforts to continually, you know, chipping away at that block, man. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, I just want y'all to know, you know, if you're out there listening to this, that I, I, I I care about y'all, man. I care about where y'all going in life. So please uh, just leave a comment on across one of my social medias. Just tag me um, and just let me know or hashtag anonymous author. Just let me know uh, what y'all got going on in y'all personal lives, how you're authorizing, how you writing your own destiny, how you taking life in your own hands, how you pinning your own future. I mean, that's what we all about over here, man. 
Anonymous, the author, you know, we authorizing, we we writing and scripting the 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 the, the diaries of our life every day. So what did you what what pages did you add to yours today? What are you doing to make sure you're getting out there, putting your best foot forward, making sure people are are tuning in and 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 making sure that 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 you are what they need, you are what they want, you are uh, somebody that they can trust and turn to, and and don't take that energy for granted because I, I know I don't with y'all. And I definitely appreciate y'all for stopping by. Definitely appreciate y'all for having some of the most positive vibes out there on the internet, man. Haven't really got any trolls yet. I'm sure they're coming, but uh, so far so good. I appreciate y'all. I'm about to get out of here. Much love. Be safe out there, y'all. I'll catch you later. Anonymous out. Peace.